Come in, Ray. Pickman! I saw it, I saw it, I saw it! It's right here, Ray. It's looking at me. He's an ugly little spud, isn't he? I think he can hear you, Ray. Don't move. It won't hurt you. Beckman! Beckman, what happened? Are you okay? He slimed me. That's great! Actual physical contact! Can you move? Well, I think there's a lesson here. If you run into a focused, non-terminal repeating phantasm, or a Class 5 full-roaming vapor, real nasty one too, don't forget to have your Positron Collider at the ready. And watch your footing. Alright, with that out of the way, here's how I added sound effects to my own unlicensed nuclear accelerator. This is a demonstration of the power up, firing, and shutdown sound effects. This is a stock Matty Collector Neutrino Wand. It normally makes sound, but that has been disconnected from this system. The new sounds are driven by a combination of an Arduino and an Adafruit Fruit sound effect board. More on that later. There is an additional power switch and a fire button added to the wand. Both are wired to hardware inside the pack. When used in conjunction with the existing neutrino wand controls, everything works more or less as expected. In this video, I'm going to detail the hardware and software that I used to build a sound effects module for my own proton pack. Ideally, you can follow along and build your own. This video is not about the proton pack itself, or the lighting, or anything else. This project will require a little bit of electronics experience, some familiarity with soldering, and ideally some knowledge of the Arduino platform. If you can assemble what's pictured here, and upload the code to the Arduino, you should be able to replicate the results that I got. It will be up to you to install this into a proton pack. Or if you want to just run this standalone by itself, that's kind of fun as well. Here's a bit more detail on the electronics and how and when sounds are played. There is a lot going on here. At top left, a view of the hardware, including power and fire switches. Underneath, a window with debug output from the Arduino. At right, a logic diagram or flowchart showing different states of the hardware. This will be a demo of the life cycle of the proton pack. Powering on, firing, doing some things, and powering off. First, we'll connect the Arduino to USB to power it up. And we'll see the power comes on. We start to get our serial debug output ready to go. And we'll turn on the power switch. We're now in power on state. We'll turn it off. we we'll play the power off sound. And now we're back to power off. Power back on. We push the fire button. First time is the shield sound. Second time, fires the wand. The wand is released. We play the fire stop. We loop back to the rumble sound. We press and hold. And we wait 18 seconds. Continue holding the button. We eventually reach the overheat state. At this point, back overheats, it resets, and it goes back to its original power state. At this point, we can continue firing the pack. This is just a test that it works. On, off, on, off. And then we turn off the pack power entirely. That's it. The Audio Effects Soundboard is a wonderful little module from Adafruit Industries. It runs on 5 volts. It shows up on your computer as a removable storage device. 
you copy either wave or aug files and name them a certain way and then it becomes very easy to play these sounds back from the device the soundboard can be run in two different ways gpio is general purpose io this is the idea of we tie a pin to ground and that causes the sound associated with that pin to play the other way is uart mode and this gives us serial communication between the soundboard and the arduino this gives us greater control over the way we can play sound here's a look at the wiring which is used between the switches the arduino and the adafruit soundboard first thing i recommend is you connect the five volts and ground from the arduino to the soundboard i should have shown two wires for this one but arduino ground to switch one and arduino ground to push button one one pin on each then pin 12 on the arduino to the other pin of push button one arduino pin 11 to the other side of switch one next one arduino pin 4 to soundboard reset rst this allows the arduino to reinitialize the soundboard then arduino pin 7 to soundboard act this is activity the soundboard pulls this pin low when it's playing sound and that's handy we'll use that later this one is two pins on the soundboard itself this is ug to ground ug is the uart gpio selector pin with ug tied low to ground when power is turned on and the board receives a reset it will be in uart mode as mentioned this is serial control instead of simply push a button get a sound finally the last two connections for the serial communication between the two devices arduino pin 6 to soundboard rx and arduino pin 5 to soundboard tx that's transmit and receive respectively this allows the arduino to control the soundboard now of course at this point it's always a good idea to double check your connections make sure you aren't shorting anything and chances are nothing will catch fire or blow up when you plug it in but uh you know it never hurts to double check okay a couple of notes on copying files to this device so you connect it to usb it shows as a removable drive should be 16 megabytes if you got the 16 meg version you might need to format it if the device doesn't seem to be working properly so use fat or fat 16 you should be able to copy wav files onto it like a regular drive you can alternately do a disk image uh, that might be a little bit more reliable it is very slow the io on my computer it varies but sometimes it can take a minute or more to copy files over so something to keep in mind all right i think i've covered everything else now is where the rubber really meets the road this is the code that actually runs on the arduino and which is also responsible for talking to the soundboard normally you would do this work in the arduino ide and i'm showing that here for the purpose of this video i'll be showing the code in visual studio full screen and with a dark background and nicer formatting and all that so here it is this is the code that i've written for the arduino whether it's an uno or a nano that is responsible for looking at the power switch and the fire button and then telling the adafruit soundboard to play the respective sounds so in the code here we have a note saying which sound t00 through t05 for the unique sound files these are wave files that are on the actual file system and more or less the arduino will tell the soundboard to play sound or track zero one two three four five depending on what's going on so i have a whole bunch of notes here about how to copy files uh, latency just when you're starting sounds because of the latency i have favored wave files they should be faster to start and 
uh, tighter in terms of looping, if we're doing any looping. There's a whole section here on how to write, how to copy files to the soundboard. Uh, you're using a micro USB, and it is possible, just there's some things I ran into, it could be slow, how to format, trouble with playing sounds, just things to um, to keep in mind. Oh yeah, and formatting, sometimes it's taken 10 minutes, which is, uh, I'm, I'm surprised, but I think it's just the I.O. is slow. Maybe it was the USB hub I was using. Anyways, your mileage may vary. Uh, there was a, there's a restore image just in case you mess everything up, which is very handy to to have just in case. Uh, some notes on flashing so that whether you want to write the restore image or your own, um, just do be careful about which drive you write to because you don't want to nuke your hard drive. That would be that would be bad. It would be bad. So I have notes on if you want to make your own image here. Um, I'm on a Mac, so on Unix type systems. Uh, you know this. You can do DD and then input, output. That uh, works quite well. Again, IO can be slow. So this is how I made an image for myself. Uh, I think I will provide this in the package for those who are interested. Okay, finally, this is all the disk uh, file system stuff. Now we're actually getting into the program itself. So what I like to do is define some debug levels. This is for the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE. So when the device, when the code is running, you can output just like you would do console in a browser. And this is handy for troubleshooting whether it's state or reading values or trying to play sounds, that kind of thing. I also define some constants up front. So I'm just giving things nice names. So we know when we're playing a power up, fire, power down, and assigning the numbers. And each number, again, maps back to this track, uh, which is the sound. And some nice labels, just so that, again, I can match things, line things up in the debug output. Now, um, now we're getting into defining pins. So this is important. This is between the Arduino, where the transmit, which pin is transmit, which uh, pin is receive. And so these are your TX, RX, and then they, they connect over to the, uh, the sound board. Likewise, there's our reset pin, activity pin, and then the, I have added these, the pins which are used for the power switch and the fire button. One of these I think is wrong, uh, sorry, analog. And I think, I think it was the fire button. I switched to be analog because I was getting some noise or interference or something and the the fire button was erratic initially when it was digital so I think that's why I stuck another this is probably an Arduino wiring issue something I've run into where I needed a resistor or a cap or something this is beyond my electronics troubleshooting ability so that's why I used the uh, the analog someone is probably frowning at me <laughs> right now for this and knows oh you just have to do X so if you know what causes this, do let me know in the comments. These are a couple of constants here where because of the input being low, I'm just defining pin off, like imagine a light switch being turned off versus turned on. And then the activity pin is also active when it's low. So these are just flipping. These are just giving nice labels to these values. It makes them easier to read. There's a bit of a debounce, so again, you push a button and sometimes it flip flops a bit. Um, so this gives it time to sort of stabilize so that we know when you've pressed a button, it isn't just quickly switching between one and zero. Like you've held it down long enough that it's in a, it's considered a real change. So now we're getting into the state and uh, I want to be clear. I did not create a state machine for this. I didn't do a full, you know, dispatch an action that then causes a change and then changes something else. No, 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 no. This is just a couple of booleans. You know, power is on, power is off, firing is on, firing is off. It's pretty straightforward and it works pretty well, um, but it's not a super strict system by any means. 
So we start with the tracking. We start by tracking power state, current state, and then last state. By default, the machine is off, so we assign values of off. And we keep track of the last time that this value was assigned. And that's part of the debounce logic. So same thing for the fire pin. It's currently off, and it was turned off at this time. We keep track of a few things here. So are we currently playing a sound? Is the board active? Active is kind of tied to playing. Are we about to play a new sound? And if we played a sound, we track it as a number. So like track zero through five. And we also keep track of the last scheduled sound. This is sort of general, just tracking of we're about to, we're currently playing something. We're about to start something. We've already played something. Uh, you'll see later. These could probably be better named, but this is what, how it ended up. This is keeping track of some state. So is the power on or off? Is the shield, and this is the first time you push the fire button, it makes that sound. It's not exactly, but it's kind of like that, right? Uh, and then I think I've got a bug in here. Did we fire at least once? So this is the first time you push, you get the shield, and the next time you're firing, you know, the wand. Um, so those are all the booleans and the uh, state bits and constants. We're finally getting now into the uh, code. Well, we're getting into the functional bit. So this is some of the Arduino stuff. You're creating a, a software serial object and you're defining, we're going to talk serial over the transmit and the receive pins respectively. So then we connect this. This is talking to the Adafruit soundboard. I left this bit in. I've never used it. I'm not sure if it's faster or better, but it seems to be an alternate way to get the same communication with the board. Okay, setup function, if you're not familiar with Arduino, this is just like the initial, uh, like a constructor, it's the init. This runs once, and then below, we'll have the main loop function that runs every every time, every, every iteration. So the initial setup is, we now configure, pin mode is um, standard Arduino stuff. We're gonna define the, and these are constants, Activity pin as a pull-up type, we get an inverted value. So when it's low, we get one. When it's high, we get zero. We have our inputs, defining those as pull-ups as well, just to be consistent um, with the activity. So that way, everything kind of runs the same. If debug is enabled, and I do this just so that we don't have unnecessary serial communication when let's say you actually put this in your proton pack in the event it makes it laggy or slow there's no need to run code when you're you don't need to so it's always handy i think to just put your debug stuff behind a little check so we start talking to the board hopefully it works we're able to reset it and then I debug here just saying, hey, we found a board, or maybe you didn't wire something correctly like your TXRX pins or the board isn't powered on or something else that doesn't work. And uh, then you know it'll tell you here. And then basically it sits and does nothing until you unplug and or restart it. There's a function uh, in it, debug. All this is nice little box, draw some ASCII characters and make it look nice. Again, this doesn't run if it's not enabled. And then I have some helper functions to make a nice little box here. The funny thing with C and languages like this is uh, you think, boy, this seems really inefficient, but this is one way to do it. You know, you print, you print some more stuff, and then print LN is your line break at the end of it. And maybe there's a better way to do this, but it's kind of old school and it works. Okay, another helper function. Debounce check, this is the thing that basically says, all right, we've got 
a button has changed. We're going to look at current time compared to the last. We'll ignore this if it's flip-flopping too fast. Like, so within 15 milliseconds, we're going to say, nah, -uh, this isn't, this hasn't stabilized yet. Wait, and we'll come back in a bit and see if it's good. So this helps uh, to prevent something from going on, off, on, off, on, off really fast. Debounce is a classic engineering problem, I guess you could say. And I should mention too that I'm not an expert at any of this, but this seemed to work um, quite reliably for me for the Arduino case. Okay, this one's a little bit, there's a bunch of sound things. So I think what I'm going to do is actually go down to the main loop function. And we'll come back to these. These are the different sound related bits here. So there's maybe we play, we schedule something, we play a sound, is the board active? So we'll come down to the main loop here. Okay, loop, this is what runs every iteration through the life cycle of the Arduino. So this is it basically doing its work. So every time we come through the main loop, we start by assuming we are not going to play a sound. And the next thing we do is we ask the Adafruit board, hey, are you playing something right now? And if the board is not currently playing a sound, but the last time we checked, we were playing, then we know that we've, a sound has finished playing. And so we can now update our own sort of local state and say, it's playing false. So it could be that the main hum loop was running and that's now finished and we'll want to start that hum again. Or it could be that the pack overheated, and now that is finished, and now we're going to want to go back to, uh, say, power up again. So this is a nice way of being able to just check the sound is finished. Now we look at the uh, switches, well, the switch and the button. So every time, again, we check, has the power button changed? Has it been turned on, off? Has the fire button changed? Has it been turned on or off? We keep track of time. Again, this is just for, oh, did something change too quickly? We'll ignore it. So a big one here is uh, we see power switch. The current state the power switch is not equal to. So that means it is not same as it was before something's changed and so we know the value's changed and the debounce is cool so the debounce says yeah it's been longer than 15 milliseconds so basically this says power switch has changed from on to off or vice versa so if we're in debug i i tell you that here and tell you which way it's going we update the state to now equal the new state and we update when this happened for debounce and now we look at if it's on then we turn the power on and we play the pack power up sound and if, the, if this is not on then it's off we say turn the power off and then we play the power down sound and I like this this is a very nice little example of what this thing ultimately boils down to is just like a light switch on and otherwise off but we have to do you know a lot of work to to get there same pattern applies with the fire button and there's just a little bit more logic to check when we fire what sound do we play so again we require the proton pack be on for the fire button to work. So the first thing is we see, do we have state power, that being the power switch, on. And then we see, again, we're checking, is the pin fire state not equal to last state? So again, fire button has changed, and the debounce also, it's been held down long enough. And we can say the fire button is either down or up. Update the local state and the time. Now this is where it gets a little more interesting. If the shield has not been set true and the pin is on, that is 
fire button is on down we're gonna go shields up and i think i don't know the ghostbusters the term exactly for this but this is the pew sound that at first before you fire the wand and you know capture slimer and all that so we play the shield on sound and then we set shield to true so this is a one-time thing the first fire that happens and then every subsequent time you push the pin fire we're gonna say start the fire sound and so that's play start and at this point i set fired at least once equals true it's important to note this is what happens the first time you push that button right and then every other time we have a couple other things to to check so if it isn't the first time this is the second third time you've pushed the button we see okay first time fire here and if you've if you've pushed it down buttons down we we do this if you've released the button we end up down here and so there are there are a couple things that we need to check here so we look to see if state if you fired at least once and if the last played sound was start then and only then do we play fire stop because it's possible that you could end up with the last played sound if you overheat the pack we'll come back to that we don't want to fire the stop because it's already burned out so that's why we also have this check here to say only if we fired the start and you release do we then play stop so coming down further here's the overheat case so this is when you you're firing you hold down the button for 18 seconds or whatever it ends up being there's a fire sound and then the, the alarm and then it shuts down and what i've done to make things really simple is that is just one big long sound uh the fire to overheat and so once that sound completes and if you've held the button down throughout that the pack will basically reset itself so there's a lot of checks so what i've done here is forgive this formatting but we're basically saying okay the power power switch is on and you've fired at least once so the shields are up uh, you are currently holding the fire button down and it's been down long enough that it passes debounce and the last played sound was the fire start so you started the switch is down you're still holding it down this is where it gets interesting board is not active and we don't have another sound that's already been scheduled to play based on the above code so basically we're saying you've held everything down sound is finished the last thing was it started and the pack has now finished playing the overheat sequence we can now check oh and you know what now that i actually look at it i think this is redundant i could probably drop this here uh, I could probably drop this if because it's been repeated. Whoops. See, I should have had a linter that uh, checked that for me. Ah, well, yeah, humans writing code. There you go. So we now know all these things are true. And the last played sound is still the fire start. Indeed, we have now finished the overheat sequence. So we're able to restart the pack in the sense of pretend that we just turned everything off and we're going to restart uh, from the beginning without actually moving any actual switches so we set state uh, the power state to off to false we reset the power last state as well and then we also say and this is i think i think i forgot to set the shield uh to false here and this is where there's a bug we set fired at least once equals false and i think what i need to do uh is actually set shield false would be the next thing that I would change uh, in in here I gotta actually come back and, and look at that later but yeah so after all of that all this business up here within the loop 
Like so, regardless of what is what has happened after we've read inputs and all that stuff, we come down here and we say, regardless of what we've done above, if the power's turned on and the board's not active and we don't have any other sound to play, then we play what is called the hum loop, and that's just that idling and then the rumble and that kind of stuff. And uh, this is what's going on when power is on, but you aren't firing anything, you're not firing the start, you're not firing the stop, and the power hasn't gone off, and the pack isn't overheating and everything. So this is the basically the idle state. And the last thing that we do is if there's a sound to be played, we, that's a scheduled sound, we do that work here. And so I'm now going to show you this function set is playing in delay. So this is effectively the thing that says, okay, we're going to start playing a sound. And, uh, so here we look and we see, okay, if we don't have any work to do, nothing is scheduled, we exit. Otherwise, we can say, okay, we are now playing a sound. We, it's not great here, but I have, I force a delay to make sure that the sound effects board has time to change its own pin. So this is the active pin, just to make sure everything gets time to sort of sync. So we want to make sure that this has time to update. That's coming from the board itself, from the hardware. If we debug, I tell you, here's what the last played sound is. And then we now update to say, the last played sound is the last scheduled sound. So I'll go back up here to show you the other sound functions. So maybe stop playing. Before we start a new sound, we have to look and see, are we currently playing something we need to stop? So if we're not playing, we can say, hey, nothing's playing at all. We can exit. Otherwise, we'll say, hey, we're we're playing something. We're going to stop the last one. So this is a very easy call. SFX is, uh, is a library call to the, the soundboard. We just say, whatever you're doing, stop. And then is playing. Local tracking is false. We've just gone through this. So this is the one uh, It seems like a straightforward function. So play and give it an offset. It's an integer, so that's like zero through five. What sound do you want to play? As mentioned, we're going to play something. Maybe we stop first. If there's something already going. And then this is a call. This is what ultimately plays a sound on the Adafruit soundboard. Uh, given an offset, 0 to 5, again, for us, our case, play that track. And then we kind of track that stuff here. We know that we've scheduled a sound to play. So we've got one on the way. And then we update the last scheduled sound to be the current offset, so we know which one is has been set up to play. Is board active? This is something that gets updated from the main loop. So we are reading, uh, di doing a digital read from the activity pin on the soundboard. And what we were comparing it to is, is that pin active? If so, that means we are playing a sound. This is handy for us when we want to know a sound has finished playing, for example. I think I covered this, but just in case. Set power. Oh, maybe I didn't cover these. Okay, so these are just the basic uh, functions that update, or like setters. So set power sets the power tracking state internally to true or false. And if the power is off, we play power off sound. And then we can say the state fired once we reset that uh, so that the next time you power it on, it will be first time fire again. Uh, set shield, same kind of thing. So we update the shield uh, connected to this to be true or false. And I think, I think that's everything. Okay, we made it. 
400 and some lines of code. Not too bad. Probably could be, well, less. I mean, I've got the better part of 100 lines of comments. So, yeah, hopefully that's um, interesting. I know, you know, code, like philosophy, there's many different opinions and different ways to do the same thing. This is just the pattern uh, that I've taken that I found work for me. I know there's a lot of globals and, and things here, um, but I've tried to to flesh things out, space things out, make it reasonable to read. Naming could probably be a bit better in terms of just the state and tracking of things. Um, but I think it's reasonable. So hopefully this makes sense to you. I mean, you may not need to change anything. If you want to add your own additional sounds uh, from the movie or the games or whatever, I think that uh, possibility is certainly there. But yeah, hopefully this is interesting and useful. And uh, of course, I'll try to make this code available on GitHub or somewhere similar. If you find it useful, let me know. If you have, if you, if you find bugs, feedback, comments, uh, let me know as well. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you so much for listening. If you run into a focused non-terminal repeating phantasm or a class 5 full for over there